What's going on everybody? Kevin here at Molson Works in my lab next door to the main shop. Today I'm doing a little experiment for you guys. I've been wanting to try it out and see how it works. So as always, I'll share it and you can tell me what you think. So first off here, I have a big bucket of these end pieces I get from cutting glass for classes. So it's just these really thin strips and I have a whole lot of them. Uh, I also have my little kiln shelves. I got these cut down to size. We call them freeform in the studio. Got bullseye paper here on top. And what I'm going to do is lay out these pieces vertically. So they're all stacked up next to each other. And before I lay them out, I'm gonna put frit down on the bottom. So on the first one, I'm actually gonna do it on the bottom. On the second one, I'm gonna do it on the top to see the difference and how it comes out. I'm gonna probably contour fuse is where I'm going for. That's in between tack and full fuse. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got a booth over here where I do all of my powdered frit that we're gonna be working with. Always making sure you're wearing that respirator as well because you don't wanna breathe in that glass. So let's jump on in. All right, so here's my setup in my booth. What I'm gonna do is be taking these thin strips again and I'm gonna just stack them straight up and down on their edge. And for one of them, I'm laying these out ahead of time because I wanna actually put the frit um, under or on top of one and see how that looks. And then do another one with the frit underneath and see. It's gonna be interesting at a lower temperature if the frit will stick when it's on the kiln shelf first. Cause I don't know if you know it, but the shelf tends to be a little cooler that's why some iridescents have to be face down on the shelf and for whatever reason it locks in the, the heat in a different way so underneath the frit could stay more powdery than actually sticking or getting uh, smooth on the top so that's what we're going to find out today now if you full fused it i'm sure it would work um but i kind of want a little texture with this I don't want it to melt all the way down. Now at this thickness, I'm also not worried too much about the uh, glass running off the end, especially because I'm not using it that hot. I will have to cool it. Probably I'll do it at the half inch program. I don't have to do that on the way up, but on the way down, you definitely want to cool it slower because it's going to be a little thicker than a, than a normal piece. All right, so I've got my one done. Now I'm going to lay frit down here, do the frit on top of this one the way I want. Then we're going to put it in the kiln. And just like any good old experiment, we're going to see how this really works. So. Let's go. All right, everybody, now that we are done with the powder part and the booth sucked it all up, we can start laying down our piece 
pieces on top of the frit. Now this obviously is a much more delicate process, so you're gonna have to be careful as we lay these down. And I'm gonna go ahead actually and move this one out of our way so that I can get this other project closer for you to see. gonna see that later that's gonna show up that's the thing about powder every little mistake you'll see all right now I'm over here at my clamshell kiln. Uh, I'm going to open it up so that I can put those kiln shelves directly in. Since my big shelf is in use right now, I can scoot these together and then I can have room to put those two pieces right on top so they're raised up so that heat can get underneath. Now we can close this down and we can begin to program our kiln. We're gonna again do contour fuse. As always, double check your kiln, make sure you test it. I'm gonna do other videos about testing your kiln to get your temperatures right so that you're always happy with the result. but it's important to know that ahead of time for tack, contour, and full fuse, or perhaps even any other special fuses you do often. All right, now I'm not sure what kind of controller you might be using. I'm using this Bartlett controller with my kiln. So all programs though do run the same rate, temperature, time. I will make sure to leave a uh, full schedule in the description since we're only firing this once as well. Um, that way you don't have to page back through the video. So today uh, we are going into our programs. I'm using program five because I know that's my contour program. Contour is in between tack and full fuse. So the pieces are more melty, but you still maintain some of the texture. So that's what this experiment is all about. So five segments in this. Now, if the piece was already half an inch thick, let's say, you'd have to go slower in the beginning and do more steps. But for this, I can still go up kind of at my normal rate that I do. So first step is 250 degrees an hour. It's going to a thousand and we're not holding it there. That's just to get it up to that first temp. Then we're gonna go as fast as possible, which is what the nines mean. We're gonna to go to 1400 in this case. Again, every kiln is different, so make sure you run your tests and know your temperatures before you really dive in, especially if it's a piece that you want to come out properly. Um, so 1400, I'm actually gonna go, yeah, no, we're gonna stick there. Okay, we're gonna do nine minutes. I'm actually gonna make it eight. Then we're gonna go as fast as possible down to our annealing temperature, which is 950. And we're going to hold there for actually 90 minutes because it's basically a half inch. I want to make sure it cools slowly. It's always better to go slower than it is to go too fast because then it will crack. So 90 minutes, we're then going to go 150 down to 800. Hold for 15 and then 200 degrees an hour down to 100 in this case and then hold zero. So it'll shut off, we don't need an alarm. So we're ready to go ahead and start our kiln and wait for the results. All right, everyone, and we're back. Time to reveal how our experiments turned out. We're looking pretty cool. So this first one um, was the glass on the bottom, I believe. So we can pull that off, the paper will come right off. So yeah, the powder was on the bottom 
So we can see we actually get a little depth through the clear with that bottom layer. And then this other one, we put the frit on top. So you can kind of see how those turned out. I really actually like the one underneath, keeps the pattern, doesn't disappear in between, and you don't have kind of the spread that you have on top. All right, so here's our final two pieces. I went ahead and ground off the edges so there's no nothing sharp on it. This one was with the frit underneath the glass. So everything was on the surface of the kiln shelf, and then we put the clear on top. I actually really like how it gives it a little depth to it. I was also able to add a layer of white so that it kind of makes it more opaque. And then for our other piece experiment, we put the frit on top, same design, and you can see it kind of faded a little bit. You've got gaps in there and that's gonna be where it pulled apart because it was sitting on the edge there. So still a cool piece, but I really liked how this turned out. So I hope you guys all really enjoyed this video and getting to see a random experiment that I did. If you have other experiments that you want me to try, please let me know. I am happy to do any of that. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys on the next video.